And uh, so turn with me to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. So our next few moments together on Wednesdays will will exist around the book of Psalms. And uh, so there will be some psalms that we will study in the coming days. And so I thought it would just be fitting to start out with Psalm 1. With Psalm 1. And so uh, we'll go through Psalm 1 today and then uh, we'll, we'll do some other psalms in the coming days. Amen? Amen. Y'all got it? All right. I want to read through it first. Then we'll kind of go back and kind of do some discussing on it. We're probably only going to cover the first three verses. It just depends on um, just depends on where we are in, in the time that we have allotted. But I know we're going to at least try to get through the first three verses. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody got it. All right, if everybody got it, so we're ready to roll. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in what? The law of the Lord, and who meditates on this law day and night. It says then that tree shall be like a that person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither. It then says something very powerful. Whatever they do prospers. Say it with me. Whatever, Whatever. they do, they do. Prospers. prospers. Mm. Then, then it kind of switches here in, in verse 4. It says, not so the wicked. They, they are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly or the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. And you know, the King James Version always says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in and then it goes and it talks about sitting. And it talks about a couple of things in there that we're going to talk about over these next few moments that we have. All right, now, so let's let's get two things out of the way. Let's, uh, somebody say two things. Two things. Let's get two things out of the way that I think we need to open up with right here, Deacon Majette, that I think uh, is oftentimes overlooked, but it's right there leading from the text. All right, now, so then, Psalm 1 summarizes mankind in two ways. I want to say that again. Psalm 1 summarizes humanity or humankind in two ways. Here are the two ways. It summarizes it in the righteous and the wicked. That's literally what the psalm declares. Blessed is the man who, who, who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, so there, there are two ways here that Psalm 1 really helps us understand humanity. One is that, it, that we need to be righteous, and then the other talks about the other way of mankind, it talks about the way of the wicked. So number one would be the way of the righteous, and number two would be the way of the wicked. Amen, somebody. Everybody got that? All right, so the way of the righteous and the way of the who? Wicked. All right, so here's what's amazing about this now. This psalm describes the blessed man who leads an untarnished and prosperous life. While, while kind of contrasting that, Sister Sylvia, with the ungodly who shall perish. Let the church say perish. perish. All right, now, so here's what we got to understand then. The psalm describes the blessed man who leads what we would call today a godly life, right? And, and then it also shows how the wicked will do what? Perish. But now let's put our kickstand down there and ponder on this momentarily. When we look at our current society, we see a whole lot of what? Wickedness, 
Right. We see a whole lot of wickedness. Now, here is what we've got to be careful as believers to make sure that we understand. Even though we see a lot of wicked happening and it looks like it's prospering, we cannot forget that the Bible says that the wicked will perish. I know it may not look like it, and many times it doesn't feel like it, but the Bible says that the wicked will do what? Perish. And then it talks about the righteous man being a blessed man and leading a prosperous life. And that's what we want to delve into today, to kind of understand what that means. And next time when we get together, we'll probably talk about the wicked side of it. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, so let's look at this real quick here. There are three expressions, if you, you have your Bibles there, you see it. There are three expressions of the blessed man initially. Three expressions of it. And I'm going to pull the Bible up here momentarily and uh, point those three ways out to you uh, here in, in just a second. But there are three ways. There are three ways when we look at this. There are three ways. It says, blessed is the man who does what? Walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Isn't that what it says? All right. And so it says there, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now watch this, because this is really key right here, what I'm getting ready to show you. Really key. Watch this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Number one. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, number two. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, number three. Okay? So what does that mean, Pastor? All right, let's talk about that. All right? So when we look at this then, these three expressions of the blessed man, he does not walk. He does not stand or sit in the counsel of who? The ungodly. He does not occupy the seat of the wicked. Well, Pastor, what is wicked? Ungodly. Sinners, right? Or mockers, or some Bibles say scorners. All right? Here's what we've got to understand here. Notice as each expression is mentioned, it gets more intense. What do you mean, Pastor? Okay, let's look at it real close. Blessed is the man, then it says, that walketh not. Right? All right? So, now watch how it gets more intense. It says, he walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Right? So, we went from walking to standing, and then it says something very powerful, nor sitteth. So, now I've gone from walking to standing to sitting in their company. You see how it got more intense? So it, it, it started out very leisurely, but it got a full head of steam, and the next thing you know, occupying in a wicked lifestyle, you sit there just like them, doing exactly what they do, and you've escorted your own self out of the will of God. Let's talk about it. Now, <clears throat> so notice... Each expression gets more what? Intense. All right? This signifies a progression from a casual influence of ungodly people to a whole lot or collusion with them in their scorn against righteous. Now, isn't it amazing that even in 2016, there are still some people that get at you, in the words of what they would say in Northampton County, that get at you about your legend. Hmm. Isn't it amazing, right, that, that, that people will still come at you about your religion because they feel like you are too committed. And in, in, in other words, they will say, it don't take all of that. I can stay at home and do everything at home that y'all do it in church, okay? Well, then explain to me why the Bible 
Bible says, forsake not the assembling together of your what? Yourselves. Explain to me why the majority of our biblical example, they, they went to the temple three times a day to do what? Pray, right? We look at that from the book of beginnings known as Genesis. When you get an exodus and come all the way to the book of Revelation, especially there in the book of Acts, folks went to what? Church, okay? So now what everybody is saying is, you don't take all that, you ain't literally got to go to the church, yada, 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 yada. Well, you got to explain the whole Bible and not just the portion that floats your boat. Amen, somebody. All right? So the Bible is very clear here, you know, because wickedness doesn't care who it consumes. Amen, somebody. Amen. It doesn't care. All right? So we've got to make sure that we understand righteousness. So one who is not characterized by this influence is blessed. So if I'm not wicked, then I'm going to be what? Blessed. Because there are only two ways. Righteousness and what? Wickedness or unrighteousness. All right? So then, watch this. So one who is not characterized by this influence is blessed. Let the church say blessed. Yes. Okay, what does that mean, Pastor? Meaning he is right with God. Right? You know what righteousness means? Right standing with God, right? Means he is right with who? With God. Right with who? With God. Right with who? God. With God. And listen to me. If we can get right with God, we ought to be able to be all right with your neighbor. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah, because if I'm right with God, that means I love you. If I'm right with God, that means I'm treating you right. If I'm right with God, that means I have a joy that only who can give? God. That only God can give, and that joy is what? Unspeakable. So now my joy is not based on things. My joy is in Him. So that's why you hear many times in church, in Him I move. In him I live. In him I have my what? My being. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right? So when we look at it then, as the, the blessed meaning he's in right relationship with God. And here's what I think is something that we really need to look at as church today in this, this 21st century, so to speak. I think this is key right here, Deacon Majet. Uh, so, you know, blessed meaning you're right with God, a right relationship with God, righteousness. And then something very powerful, y'all. Enjoys spiritual peace. Mm -hmm. Enjoys spiritual peace. Let the church say peace. Peace. Yeah, I mean, think about it. When you begin to look across the landscape of our society, the question is, is has to rise, that has to rise is this. How much peace you see? Let's take it a little bit further. How is peace in your house? All right. You know, I, I, I remember uh, my pop when he was working at Union Camp, right? He worked eight hour shifts and, and back then they didn't care if you worked a double, you know, 16 hours straight, you know, they'd pay you time or half, whatever the case may be. And uh, then my, my pop was what they called a 10 percenter, meaning that uh, if, if, if the supervisor or the foreman was going to be out, that he would have to walk in those shoes and they called them 10 percenters. All right, and so then he would come home after he had been out there at Union Camps, what his name was, and working and doing everything. And he'll say, "Let me tell y'all one thing. You know, he'd come home, we'd be cutting up terrible, making noise, going crazy, complaining, you know, like children do, right?" And uh, he said, "Let me tell y'all one thing. I went through pure mm -hmm. H E double L <laughs> at work." Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some peace, peace here. <laughs> he said, I'm going to tell you that right now. He said, I might have to go through it over there because that's somebody else's stuff. Uh, but over here, we're going to have some peace. peace. And ain't that literally what people are searching for? Yes. That they're trying to find peace. Some one helps us. <laughs> Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. 
That, that must mean then, if I'm not walking in the counsel of the ungodly, that I'm walking in righteousness with God, and as a result of that, I am blessed because he gives me what? Peace. peace. Shalom. He gives me peace. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. All right. So when we see this then, he, he's blessed, meaning he's right with God, right? He enjoys spiritual peace, right? And he, he, he enjoys a joy that results from the relationship with God. Listen to me. Just because you serve God doesn't mean you shouldn't be full. Of, you ought to be full of joy. Sometimes I'm amazed because sometimes when I come in contact with Christians, with believers, right? You know, I say, how you doing? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Mm -hmm. I hate when I hate that. <laughs> well, come on. There's, there's never a short discussion. There's never a short discussion right there. You follow me? Every, well, let me tell you right Because they're getting ready to complain. And the one thing that I have always been taught is there ain't no need to complain because nobody... No, nobody want to hear it, right? No, nobody want to hear it. So, so, you know, when we look at this, then we've got to make sure that we understand that our joy comes from and through God. And God allows things in the earth to cross our path to continue to bring us what? Joy. When you have a newborn baby, right, 98% uh, of the time, there's joy. When you have a new grandbaby, you know, once you get straight, that, that you're not going to be the babysitter and the caretaker, and that you made the baby, the baby going to be yours. Once you get all the law laid down, most of the time you excited and got joy because you got a new what? Grandbaby. And then most of the grandparents are joyous when they have grandbaby because they said, especially over in this neck of the wood, you know, because they said real quick. You know, I don't mind the grandbabies because when they start getting on my nerves, I can send them back home. home, right? So, but there's a joy when they come. And so, so you know, God allows us to embrace and envelop joyous moments in this journey called life. And so we all have some joy. You know, every time there are some people that you come in contact with, every time you see them, they down level to the ground. You follow what I'm saying? Every, every time you see them, they talk about how people are stomping on them and how it seems like they can never get over the hump, so to speak, right? That, that they're always behind the eight ball, right? But as a believer, there's a joy that we have because we are blessed to be able to walk with who? With God. So even in the worst of situations, we still have what? Joy. You know, on the other day I was down uh, with uh, Mother Margaret Long. She was going to surgery. And, uh, you know, and so she's ready to go into surgery and, and uh, you know, and, and uh, we're getting ready to pray. You know, they're there, getting ready to take her out. And the nurses, you know, said, you know, can we be a part of the prayer, this kind of thing? So the nurses got in the prayer with us. And so we prayed, right? And so after the prayer was over, you know, and I let Mother Long's hand go, Mother Long looked up at me and she said, hey, Pastor. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I love you. I said, Mother, I love you too. And she said, the Lord got this, don't he? I said, yes, ma'am. Because when you have his joy, amen. amen, somebody. When you got the joy of the Lord, that is your, yes. your strength. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right? So those are vitally important to lead a blessed life because that those are results from a relationship with who? With God. It gets deeper, though, because basically here, we have to also ascertain that godly people are not influenced or are influenced not by unrighteous people, but by his med but by meditation on the word of God or in the word of God. Amen. This is key. So now, if I'm going to lead a righteous life, Sister Mason, according to this word, I am going to be able to have to meditate in the word of God. Joshua gives us information about this, don't, doesn't he? He says you got to meditate in the word of God how often? Day and night, all right? So now when I look at this, we, we got to understand that godly people 
are influenced not by unrighteous people, but we are influenced by meditation on the Word of God. Somebody say the Word of God. Word of God. Okay. Now, here's what's interesting. This kind of meditation then, Brother Lee, involves, it, it, it involves two things. Number one, it involves study. Let the church say study. Study. Yeah. It involves study. And then number two, it involves retention. Retention. Yeah, been able to keep some of it. Man. Amen, somebody. I, I'm amazed. I know a, a lady right now, it blows my mind. She has dementia. Mm -hmm. 